is 12 to 16 percent unit 8 and the first part was disorders now let's take a look at therapy or treatment um, first thing to be aware of is uh, there's different types of therapists. There's an, a psychiatrist who has an MD, and then there's MFTs and LCSWs that can also do therapy. Only a psychiatrist can give medication. Um, all right, let's see here. All right, let's start with um, psychodynamic therapy. So we start with the key to psychodynamic is the unconscious. So they would, they would say all of your disorders are due to some kind of an unconscious problem. So their therapy wants to see what's going on in the unconscious. So it's tonight's called insight therapy because it's trying to find insight as to what is going on. A couple things to be aware of. There's something called um, transference. And transference is, this is not moving for some reason. Hold on. There we go. Transference is um, when someone talks to a therapist, for some reason, they're going to treat the therapist like their parents. And they're going to transfer their feelings towards their parents parents toward the therapist and that can give the therapist insight into how you feel about your parents they will also analyze dreams but the latent symbolic content of the dream and um, they will also use free association and just have the ones just speak freely and they'll interpret for like clues of what's really going on in the unconscious. Um, nobody's really a Freudian anymore. The new thing is called object relations. That's the new modern kind of therapy. But remember, like with depression, therapy, psychodynamic thinks that there's some kind of unconscious anger that would be causing the depression. All right. We have to criticize all of them. The criticism on psychodynamic and Freud is it's not scientific. It's not empirical. That's the um, big criticism. All right, the next big one, it would be Carl Rogers. And he's the one that, um, he goes away from Freud. He says, you're not a patient, you're a client. He basically says what people need is to be accepted. And he called that unconditional positive regard. And then in the therapy, he would have empathy. He would listen. And his view is that you would work it out and that your true self, who you really are, would match your public self, and you would be okay. He has a very positive view of human nature. He's a humanistic psychologist. All right, we have to criticize everybody, even Carl. Some say he's naive. He says all people are good at nature. That's the critique of humanistic. All right, behaviorism is the idea that we, you know, that if you, you've learned everything. So if you've learned it, their therapy, you can unlearn it. So behavior therapy, a lot of times, will have you take action and create new experiences with new reinforcements and new punishments that can help you. Um, so for example, uh, systematic desensitization is a behavioral therapy and it uses um, positive experiences to overcome, for example, fear. So let's say you're afraid of a spider, you would have a hierarchy of anxiety from like low anxiety to high, and then step by step, you face your fear. And then with each step, you breathe deeply and have a positive experience. And then you're able to work your way up step by step and um, basically face your fear and no longer fear the spider anymore or whatever it might be. Exposure therapy would be just you you overwhelm somebody with the fear. That's the second type. So two, two types. This one's more usually on the exam. Systematic desensitization is a type of behavioral therapy. Um, averse of conditioning is for a bad habit and you you would for example they had one where you would smoke uh, cigarettes as much as you like every time you smoke they'd shock you smoke shock smoke shock smoke shock and you form an aversive or negative experience between the smoke and the shock the thought of smoke would make you think of the shock it would make you stop smoking averse of conditioning it works for a while but then um, it comes back later all right. Um, all right. Cognitive therapy is a big one. And this is really about interpretation. The way you interpret things, they would say, is the problem. Depressed people interpret their life and their world very negatively. That would be the cause. Now, cognitive people, they are behaviorists, plus they add the dimension of thought, meaning they agree that, that your experiences, that your learning is very important. But they add the element of how you think about something. And that would be something like um, the, the idea of the interpretation. Okay, so for example, a cognitive therapist would say that 
depressed people blame themselves and they catastrophize, they exaggerate, they generalize, like it, they'll say like, I'm bad at everything or I'm, I'm, I'm can't do anything right. And they have these really hopeless negative thoughts that, that make them, that would be the cause of their depression. So their therapy, you try to fix those negative thoughts and replace those with more positive thoughts. Two cognitive guys, one is Ellis, rational emotive therapy, E for Ellis. And it just, the key word there is, he says, just be rational. And he argues that really um, some event happens like you get a divorce or something, or you fail a class. And, and that creates what he calls an irrational belief. And that what you have to do is see how irrational your belief is and use logic to solve it. So he says, oh, I'll never, I'll never do anything right. He'll say, well, is that really rational? You won't ever do anything right? And then he would get people to use logic and calmly stop distorting things, stop blowing things out of proportion, see things as they are. And that would be his type of treatment. Cognitive, because he's, he's treating the way you think. Beck was another cognitive psychologist, and he was similar. Um, he had a thing called homework. So like if you said, well, I, and, and everybody hates me. He'd say, okay, well, this week, you know, every time you meet somebody, write if they hated you or not. And then you'd come back a week later and say, he'd say, okay, well, what happened? And you say, well, f n no one really hated me. And he said, oh, see, so was that an accurate belief? Big idea here. He's cognitive. He also is logical and, and trying to diminish cognitive distortions that create problems like depression. All right, biological is really big now. Medication, deinstitutionalization means there are no more mental hospitals. People are out of them, so if they are medicated, they don't need to be in a mental hospital, which works as long as they take their medication. All right, antidepressant medication is really, really big now. Serotonin, it uh, is a antidepressant medications increase your serotonin through a serotonin reuptake inhibitor. The other one is ECT. ECT is very effective on depression. They both are good, powerful biological tools to counter depression. Bipolar works with lithium. Think of like a, bi a battery, like a lithium battery. Um, lithium is a salt that is very good at treating bipolar. Um, seasonal affective disorder, they turn lights on. Those are, that's very effective. And then schizophrenia is a, a strong psychotic disorder. Clozerol and other antipsychotic medications can diminish um, schizophrenia, but it has very, very strong side effects. And uh, remember, dopamine hypothesis is one of the um, theories of, of schizophrenia. So antipsychotics are pills, medication that diminish the hallucinations, to make turn down the delusions, make them more logical, but they have strong side effects. Anxiety disorders are Xanax and Valium, those calm people down. They don't like to use those because these, these kind of drugs people can get high on and get addicted to. No one would ever get addicted to Clozerol or antidepressant medication, but they would to Valium, so they're not used too much. Token economy is a technique where, like, um, you know, they use it in school sometimes, where if you have good behavior, you can earn tokens and then turn those in. Sometimes that's used. Family, family therapy is very powerful because, you know, people are part of a family and they, can, and they would like to see the whole family sometimes, especially with children, to see what's going on with family dynamics. Group therapy is also powerful. You get feedback from other people. And encounter groups were kind of humanistic hippie groups of the 60s. All right. Can we criticize it? Nope. I think we got it. Okay. That is treatment.